I've been like kind of um, down to different sides, just where the nature of the beast at the moment. Really, really busy. Everybody wants to have their fish Christmas. Trying to keep push, push, push. Now me saw it's gone down, so I'm gonna have to take this off. See what's going on. Why it ain't working? Why is this to do the ratchet? I bet something like that. So I've got to fix this. Then I've got to jump over there, put a mold on there. So I better crack on. You know when you're under pressure and then things like this happen. I know what they feel like in the Yukon Gold now. Under pressure, bricks need to be cut, need more G-decking, but I love it. The one thing I do do is I'll undo it and I won't take it completely off because sometimes just loosen it and all Sometimes get it to the pull back. Nope, not happening. Put that up there nice and neatly. There we go, right. So I'm going to wind it back in again. Things to do with this clip. Probably just slipped. Quite easily done sometimes. Go ahead and get it back in again. I'm just going to nip that off. Hopefully that might have done it. Just might have just slipped on the plate. That's all I can think it might have done. If it is, that'll be a nice quick fix. Big Bertha, look at that! <laughs> Big Bertha! It's really Bing! Yeah, this is what I'm worried about, you see. That has a whisk clock maker to you. Yeah. See, there's, there's the there, spring. There, there, it's there. So yeah, that's the spring that's knackered, knackered looking at that. My apprenticeship was in spring making. <laughs> Do you know what? <laughs> yeah, four years, tool making, four years spring tool making. making. Right, so the question being... This is springs? What that's we want to do, we there. want to try and coil it around, don't we? Yeah, to try and put more tension back on it. Yeah. This is where I've been dainty little builder hands like yours, Tony. It's a bit yeah. of an asset, isn't it, really? <laughs> now, do you reckon that'll do it? I don't know. We could, uh, we could, then we could always just be careful. We've got, to, we've got to just let it gently go without losing it. So the question now is we whether can, it's going to We can build as much tension into that as we want. We've just got to put that rope through at the right point to do what we so want. So look, to that do. comes out now as we're pulling it. Oh, it does feel like it's... We, it's got it. you we want don't that want so much on, we only want enough on, no. but it takes up that string. Which is how many how many wines is that? Two wines. Two so we wines. want to get two wines on that. So if we put a marker, Tom. Okay, so basically that point there, and I'll go all the way around one. Yeah. Two, yeah? Then we put that on. Then put that on. Yeah. Pull that, pull that in. Good to go. Okay. That seems like it's got some decent tension on that now, Tom. Yeah, so it so, pulls out, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so if you feed that through there now, mate, we'll just put a little bit of tension on. Right, you're nice little knot, mate. Yeah, just now, if you don't do it too tight, just in case this doesn't work. What? I think we need to put a bit more spin on it. <laughs> He's the man! Look right. at that! I thought you used to make springs for a living. Oh, don't do it too many times. <laughs> Quick, let's get it started. Ready? Here we go. Oh, you're recording. Do <laughs> <laughs> you start loading and see how many can get on? That's the one that top pallet. Top yeah. pallet. Yeah. Top pallet.
we picked up some PIR boards uh, regarding for the loft conversion. It was the only one we could get hold of with the foil on the back, but obviously the other ones have been used and got paper on the back. But this will just do the job just as good and they're gonna do it for the same price. So, but we've had to come all the way over to Stratford to get it because nobody else has got it in stock. So we're now gonna go back to Carve, get it unloaded, and then the guys can crack on. <laughs> This is uh, Tim Murphy for the loft and obviously then for the new part of the loft that we're getting through a lot of footage to. So what we're doing is they're handballing it and we're just going to get the big end lifted off. the extension, roof and then obviously to finish off with that. The clients brought this stone in and what they've asked me to do is try and put a mould on here. Don't know how successful it's going to be but obviously um, we'll endeavour to do the best job we can. The great thing about this, if there's any pit and hole in, it can be touched in and filled because these are actually being painted like the rest of the house. So I've got to match this mould. And the only way I can do that is I'll take a nice little template, start cutting the template and try and get it to match up really nicely. And yes, I know I could do with a profiler, but my profiler isn't here. Somebody's borrowed it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw it in freehand. It's gonna be pretty close. Get my Stanley blade and cut it in nicely. So let's have a look, see how close I got for the the first go, oh that's not bad is it guys, look at that, it's not bad at all, not bad at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a, a bit of a marker for myself, and now what I will do is I'll actually cut slightly on the line with the grinder to see how it cuts. Now I've got my little mould here, so I know that the mould, you can imagine that the top section here is actually, so that's the size of the mould you see, so basically when I put the mould in I've marked the bottom of the lintel and then the top and you can see it's got like a little bit of an angle here, so if I just mark that point there, that I know is in stone, so that in stone, sorry, I've got a measurement there now, so what I'll do, have a marker. That's so basically 48 mil. 48. 48. And what I'm going to do is give myself a really nice straight edge and use that as my guide. I got my glasses in. I need to be able to get my glasses in. I wouldn't be able to see anything. The airflow is going. And obviously the important thing, music.
I've done is I've put all the moulding I need to put in to match up with the lintels on this uh, concrete um, lintel and then once I've got it bricked in all I'm going to do is just get my little Dremel out, a little scriber and I'll just finish these little corner details on later on it's just I want the brickies to be able to crack on because I've been getting very close to putting this on and I don't want to hold them up so ideally it would have been nice to work on it down here but obviously sometimes it's not always the case is it guys? <sighs> Hey, good morning guys, so it's Saturday morning. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be plasterboarding the whole of this lot, that's the mission today. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from here. Now you probably notice we've got some double studs here. And the reason we do them like that is that as we put the plasterboard on, because it's an insulating board, I know I can get a really good mechanical fix in there. And we always use these washers, you see them here? Whenever we do an insulated board, always put these washers on because then I can know it's going to be absolutely solid. I don't depend on just the small head of the screw. And I'll then go 1200, 1200, 1200, 1200, small bit in there. Once that's in there, then normal plasterboard here. I don't put my linings in, I always leave my linings out because then I always cut to the timbers. Got a nice uh, gap there where the liners and I wedge it all up, and I'll show you that later on how I'll cut the wedges and everything else work across here, plasterboard across, and then I'll then be on this side elevation here, start working on getting the board across here. Obviously we've got um, air conditioning pipes running down here at the moment, so I'm gonna put a bit more insulation in, tack it back up and in, and then I can board them straight across there. And then hopefully by the end of today, we'll have it done. There's the mission for us, so. So 725, and then what's it down? 1020. 1020. Now, what you can do now is just measure that length across there now. Okay, you mate. 687. Yeah. One four three five. One four three five. Look at that. Now, that's all you'll do is because you'll do everything with a chalk line, you see. Ah, uh, okay. Like that. So next one's in. Let's get the tongue going on that one. There you go, lovely. Just 654. So if I do just 650, yeah? Because we can soon uh, trim, can't we then, yeah? yeah. And what's the width it's going to go to, Tom? 680. Six When you're cutting, guys, what you'll see is the insulation over clips sometimes. So I always trim that off. If it's like a couple of mil, then I don't bother, but it's actually worse at the other end. There you go. Trim that off. Measured in 1430. Yep. I leave anything lying around, so basically as soon as I mount it, move the level out of the way, I've got the saw ready to go, spit my sheet, keep it nice and tidy all the time around me, cut my line, make sure I've got my 40 degree. Now some people use a saw, a gun saw, me personally, I don't like the dust going everywhere. And look, look how long it took me to do that. Right, what do we need buddy? 825. Right, so 825, run that in, halfway. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now, if you notice, I kept the nice clean sharp edge going up to the board. The cuts always going into the wall. Tom's doing these, He's pinging them because we've marked the centre of the top of the stud, centre of the bottom of the stud. He's just hooking on the top, pinging it. Just gives us then the fixing lines, so we can just get all the right fixings in. I like to then see it all nicely lined up. Well, what we'll do is that I'll mark down 400, strike it, strike it, strike it at the top, bottom. Come over here and we'll ping the whole lot. Just maybe a bit obviously. There we go, 400. You've got 400 mark there, Tom. Well, I'm a minute. 470 to the first one. Yeah, and then and 400 then, off that. And then 400 off that, mate. That's it, there you go, mate. Down, 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 down. That's it, there. Okay, mate, there is an next one there, mate. You got it? Pull it tight. That
There you go. Never gone to any of the make when these screw bits first came out. Nobody else ever made them. It was always Senko. I've always kept with Senko because they're just brilliant, brilliant guns. Don't know what the Mikita ones and all the other ones are like, but for me, all day long, Senko, Senko, Senko. Yes, I'm not being paid for this advert. Here we go. This is the new 18 volt, 3 amp um, battery. Really reliable. I mean, to be honest, once this is fully charged, I can run with this all day long and it won't ever drain. Just the balance of them as well, compared to some of the other ones I've used. Uh, there are other ones, other makes out there, but we can Zenko all day long. Now the one the key thing is when you do this, you've got to make sure this screw doesn't go in too deep. See that's too deep. So you've got to make sure that you adjust the mechanism here to make sure it only just slightly creases the surface of the paper. A little bit better, let's try again. That's better, look, you see now. There's the next board on through here now. Get that in, I can then trim that off here. Now there's two ways you can trim this. You can either use a saw like that and trim it that way. Like that, or you can put a standing knife down it. Literally, you can see the measurement I need over there. I'm going to measure that, and then obviously, you've got a 40 degree pitch through, but that's the strike line there. And that'll give me the point here, the strike line of the plaster board, you see. And all I'll do is I'll measure from this point to there, and then transfer it to the top of the board, which I'll show you now. I'm going to mark it out. Just that corner point there. There you go, 1140. And then that measurement there. Is 240, and then the measurement across from there to that strike point is actually one meter ninety. One meter ninety, which is there, which is there. Draw the line in there. Yeah. Two forty there. Eleven forty. Eleven forty. When I join that together now, hopefully. We're pretty much on the money. One thing, obviously, the board's going to run across, and we've got the doorway in there as well. So um, that means it's going to be a meter forty. It should be level forty all over the top, which it is. Level forty there. Level forty there. There we go. Let's score that one in there, guys. Look at that. Look at that. That's what we want. Beautiful. There you go, because I'm going to saw that, like you see, I don't want it drifting. I'm going to go across. Some brand new ones are pretty. Yeah, we'll grab some tape. Chocky Vickies and WD4. It's the bit. Yes, this is definitely a bit tired. There we go. Right, let's uh, uh, probably actually see because I'm not using the installation now, I'm just cutting on my board. I flipped out the mag because that's what I do. There you go, score across, lovely. So here guys, all I would do is I'll just make it wide, 500 mil wide, and just put it up and then just trim off to the edge. So all I'm gonna do now is cut myself a piece of 500 wide. We 
we measure so this measurement here, yeah. And then what we can do is then we could just cut our strike line here, can't we? This measurement, yeah. At like a degree, and then we'll just cut back the insulation. What we know because we use this as a guide, yeah. That's that first one, and then we want to come in. I think 15 mil, Tom. I'd rather okay. give it extra. Yeah. So. Fifteen mil. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is mark it back on the insulation now. Push it back the other way. Okay. Basically, we need to come back to it over like that. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I do when I'm cutting plaster wood, I never try and cut it deep like I would do a piece of timber, otherwise I go in quite shallow, how to stop the blade. So look, you can actually see how shallow this is guys. I like my plaster wood to meet uh, on the connections when I'm using this slate board. So. Put that away there, reach over, and all I'll do is I'll just cut to the depth now, put a little bit of an angle on it, cut it all the way along, and you'll see why I'm doing this in a minute, because when the insulation board underneath it just locks it all through, some of the heat goes this way. Hey you beautiful people, another beautiful day. So if you enjoy the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so every time we upload a video, you'll be notified. So have an awesome week. See you soon guys on the next vlog.